Hello friends, we are still not employed by a fang company, so let's not stop lead coding till we get there. Today we are going to do word search to lead code problem and if we see some of the companies where I want to get a job who have already asked this question, there are companies like Amazon, Uber, Microsoft, Google, Snapchat, Facebook, Apple, Twitter, TikTok, Bloomberg, Spotify, Twitch and Airbnb. So that's why I'm paying my utmost attention. I hope you also enjoy the video. So this is the lead code hard problem and basically we are given an M cross N matrix of characters now and we are also given a different list of string called words. Now we need to return all the words that are present on the given board. We are also given one more thing that each word must be constructed from the letters that are adjacent to each other. So and we are also given the definition that what adjacent cells are basically any cells that are horizontally or vertically neighboring to each other. We can consider them to be a part of the consecutive sequence series and we can use them to create words. So let's try to understand this with an example over here. Over here we are given a four cross four matrix and for this matrix we are told that these these are the list of words we need to check that whether they are present inside this given matrix or not so if we try to just look at this example basically we can see that this first word oath is actually present over here where uh, o a t and h they are uh, creating or forming this word and if you see they are all sequentially adjacent cells to each other so that's why we can use them to form this words and see whether it's present or not so in the answer first of all we are going to add the word oath uh, as one of the answer then if we look at the answer we can also find this word uh, eat to be present so e a t a that is present in this manner and again though this is on the left side this is not the conventional way to write it but still based on the adjacent cells we can actually form this word eat and that's why this eat is also going to be part of the answer so we'll add eat in the answer as well now for this two p e a p and rain these two are not present inside this given matrix so we will not include them in the answer and this is the answer we will have to return so basically it is one kind of a word search game or word search puzzle so that is why the name is word search 2 and this is the little bit of advanced version so first we'll see that what is going to be like a basic very trivial approach and then we will try to improvise using a uh, a different set of data structures okay so most basic idea we are going to have is that we will start iterating over all of the characters that are present inside this m cross n matrix and then for every single character we are going to see that whether that matches with any of the starting words or not if we find a potential match then we will try to find the subsequent character and the neighbors of that particular character to see if we are able to generate any exact word or not and the moment we do that we will actually put it in a new variable called answer and that is how we will be able to generate our answer so let's try to see this in action so first character in this case is x so x matches with this character over here in the in the given set of words so next we will have to see that whether any neighbor of x is actually y or not neighbor of x is actually h and a we do not find y over here so because we do not find y over here this x does not lead to anywhere so we okay we can mark this as visited that does not lead to any answer next character is h so h matches with this first character uh, and then we will have to see that whether b exists as one of the neighbors of h and b also exists as one of the neighbors of h and then the subsequent character o also exists as one of the neighbors of b so in this case this hbo is actually a complete word we are able to make based on subsequent characters that are pro present adjacent to each other inside this given matrix and because of that we are going to create a new variable called the answer and in the answer we are going to add the the value hbo over here now we will start iterating over this a so again a is the starting point over here and next character b and c we are able to generate this pair using subsequently iterating over and uh, if we see over here we can also generate this a b c in this fashion now this character is y so again y is not part of starting character of any other word so we cannot do anything about this our next character is again c that we have already visited so we don't need to visit this and next character is z z again is not the starting point of any of these characters so in this case this is the answer we were, we are going to have and we, we can return this one this solution works as expected there are no issues with this one but if you just see we only have a 3 by 3 matrix and for every single character 
in the worst case scenario we might have to iterate over every single word uh, and check that whether it matches the starting word or not we can maybe simplify using a hash map uh, but the thing is this is still going to lead to a very bad solution in terms of time complexity this is going to be disaster for because for every single character we might have to iterate over every single word that there is and uh, once we find a match then we will have to iterate over all the neighbors of that particular character as well so that leads to nowhere so let's try to see that where we can find a better time complexity and uh, the solution to achieve a better time complexity is actually using a new data structure called try now i have already extensively worked on try and you can find all of those solutions over here uh, check out this video if you want to learn that what a try is and what are its applications now let's see that how we are going to use try in this case to improve our uh, performance okay so the previous example we see basically what we are doing is we were iterating over every single character and then we were trying to see that whether that character matches the first element or not and sequentially we will have to check every single word that was present and if we find a potential match then we will have to check all the neighbors to see if the next consecutive element is present or not and that was the major reason that why we were having a disastrous time complexity so in order to improve that if we can find a some way to eliminate this uh, checking procedure that for every single character we might have to look up all the elements or all the words that are present because imagine if there are million words present we might have to check million times and then that is going to be very disastrous uh, the idea we are going to use is that whatever the words that we are given we are actually going to convert these into a try and because we are converting them into a try for any character searching that whether it is the starting point of any word or not becomes pretty easy for us and we can actually do it in uh, nearly constant time uh, because in the try it is very fast and efficient to find that whether any word exists or not and if it exists uh, it is very easy for us to iterate over that particular word or not so first of all let me quickly create a try block based on these three words uh, the try block is going to look like this so based on the words that we were previously given, we actually created a try block. And now using this try block, we are going to make things pretty easy for ourselves. Basically, we are going to iterate over in the same fashion for uh, the given matrix. But this time, we all we will have to see is to look up in this try that whether the current character, if that is any children of this given root node or not. And if that is the case, we will keep on iterating. So first we find this character to be E. E is not part of any children, so we can, we can ignore that. Next one is F. F is actually part of a children. So, okay, now we have found F to be part of the children. Now we will have to see that what is the next character in the in this uh, try block. So this next character is A. So we will have to see that whether any neighbors of this F is actually A or not. So we, are H, we will have to check on three sides and we find a match over here that this is A. Okay, now again next character is A. Again, this neighbor is actually A. Okay, now this character is N. So again, neighbor of this A is N present over here. And again, the next character is G. So G is also present over here. And since we have reached to the end node uh, inside our try, because of that, uh, we can conclude that the whole word was actually present inside this given uh, matrix and we can return true in this case and we will add it to our answer list. So inside the answer list, the first word we are going to add is Fang that uh, is present inside this given matrix. So see how easy it is for us to find this these things. And okay, now the next character is R. R is not children of uh, any of these root nodes. Uh, next one is T. T is also not a children. L is not a children. These, th these are all visited. Now this G g is actually a children so now it becomes easy now we will have to start iterating over okay so we are at this position g now the next element is o o o the next element is o and o is also a neighbor over here okay so which is good now the next element is o again o is a neighbor over here so which is good now this next element is g g is also a neighbor of this o right so we are good up until this point now we have to find this l now, if we look at this G, we do not find L to be a neighbor of this G. So because of that, we will actually have to roll back and we cannot move forward uh, with this path. So now we will be have we would have visited this G and we that did not lead us to anywhere. So again, we will start with our routine uh, procedure. Okay. Now this next character is O. O is not starting point of anything. T is also not starting point of anything. G is we can we have already used it. Now this is again G. 
so again g is the starting point of this one next character is o o is present over here next character is o o is also neighbor of this one next character is g g is neighbor of this one next character is l l is neighbor of this one and next character is e e is the first character and because we reach to the end character over here we can conclude that google is also present inside this given matrix and we will add it to our answer so we will add one, one other entry called google okay and now next uh, again this character is l so l does not lead to any children of this root node and f does not lead to any children of this root node so in the answer we are going to return this uh, fang and google to be the answer and this uh, this would be the most optimal way to solve this problem remember because we used a try block it things becomes much more faster for us and we can immediately look up that whether any single character that leads to an answer or not okay now let's do the tricky part we will have to do the time and space complexity analysis so for the time complexity analysis it's actually a little bit tricky the first thing that is a given fact is that we will have to iterate over every single character that is present inside this given m cross n matrix so that's a given fact suppose that the total number of cells that are present are actually m so now okay we already know that that is whatever the time complexity is going to be the factor of m now for this particular m imagine that for any particular character what is the maximum work we will have to do in the worst case scenario well the maximum work we can do have, we will have to do in the worst case scenario is that any particular character suppose this f is this f matches this character that is present now for whenever we find a potential match we will have to look for the next element in all three directions of that particular word so suppose this o has v was a potential match we will have to iterate over all four directions in any given case so for any single cell we might have to iterate over in the all four directions and for all four directions the number of traversal that we will have to do for each one of them would depend on the next three or the next remaining three characters because remember for this google suppose we find a match this o to be a match now the moment we find this o to be a match again we find this o to be a match so now because we find this to be a match we do not have to look for this particular element we will have to look at the remaining three positions so then we will have to for any single character we will have to look in the four directions and for all the subsequent elements we will have to look in the remaining three directions and that we will have to do depending on the length of that particular word so for the remaining three elements we will have to iterate over to the length of that so that's why three to the power of l minus one and why minus one because for this first character we are actually looking looking in the worst case scenario in all four directions and for all the subsequent length parameters so suppose for this particular fang for this f we might have to look in four directions and for this a we only have to look in the remaining three directions because one adjacent cell is already f so that we we do not have to look at so this is going to be the time complexity so if i write the final time complexity it's actually going to be big o of m uh, into 4 times 3 to the power of l minus 1 and that is the final time complexity this is a very difficult time complexity analysis uh, so yeah it gives you an idea that why this problem is pretty popular if we see space complexity that is pretty simple space complexity depends on the total number of words that are present so suppose we sum that up to big o of n where m is the total number of characters that are present in the or initial word list uh, so after doing this time and space complexity analysis now let's move on to the coding before we implement our solution we are actually going to create our class try node in the class solution we are going to define couple of global variables now inside the find words method first of all we are going to initialize our try block and we are going to add all the words to our try block after creating the try node now we are going to start working on backtracking uh, starting with each cell in the board so first of all let's create uh, the board variable and now we are going to initialize couple of loops to iterate over this full board uh, matrix so now for every single position inside this given matrix we are going to check that whether that is actually any of the children of this root try node that we have created and if that is the case then we will create a helper method called backtracking where we are going to iterate over the all the adjacent cells of that particular row and column position and also uh, that particular entire dfs traversal for that particular uh, branch inside our try node 
after this loop ends basically we should have populated our answer inside this answer uh, variable that we have created so we can simply return that and now let's create our backtracking method so this is going to be our recursive method uh, first of all we are going to define a couple of variables first of all we are going to check that whether the current node is actually a word or not if that is a word we can immediately add it to a result okay if that is not the case we will have to start doing our traversal so how we are going to do our traversal remember whatever the current row and column is we cannot use the same word again so we are actually going to mark this as hash in a way for us to identify that uh, that is the node we have already visited now for any given row and column we will have to iterate over all of its neighbors so we are going to use couple of variables to our advantage now with the help of row and column offset it becomes pretty easy for us to iterate over all the neighbors of any given node so now we are going to run a for loop and we are going to iterate over all the neighbors of given row and column position first we check that whether our new row and new column if they are going out of bounds or not that is the case we just simply ignore that otherwise if we are at the correct neighbor we need to check that whether that neighbor is actually subsequent character uh, that we have already stored in our try or not and if that is the case we are going to call our backtracking method again now our after our exploration ends basically we will have to uh, put back this hash to its original position and that should be it there is one more optimization we can we can do and that is to incrementally remove the leaf nodes which means that whenever we identify that the current nodes children if that is empty then basically we can just remove that from our parent that should be it let's try to run this code We will also have to update the value of the node in the else condition. Okay, seems like our solution is working as expected. Let's submit this code. And our code runs pretty efficiently. I will be posting this in the comments so you can check it out from there. Thank you.